The winter of 1942-43 was particularly challenging for German forces. The Wehrmacht's 6th Army had suffered a crushing defeat at Stalingrad. The tide had shifted against the Germans for some time, but Stalingrad was a crushing blow, with nearly a quarter million troops dead or captured. The Russian bear was far from dead, despite the propaganda newsreels being broadcast in Berlin. The Red Army was in command, and German forces had no choice but to dig in, defend, and reorganize. To re-establish political and military prestige, Nazi leaders required a successful campaign against their main enemy, the Soviet Union. This was the impetus for Operation Citadel, the offensive at Kursk. The Germans' rapid advance and retaking of Kharkiv had left a vast Soviet-held salient projecting into the front line, with the key areas surrounding the southern city of Kursk. The goal of Citadel was to envelop and destroy Soviet forces in the Kursk salient, by attacking and breaking through the base of the salient from both north and south simultaneously. The German offensive was delayed due to Hitler's hesitation, his decision to wait for more Tiger and Panther tanks to arrive in the hopes of gaining a technical advantage that would help him win the offensive, and disagreements within the high command over the deployment of new forces and equipment. As a result, the attack did not begin until July 5, 1943. Stavka, the Soviet high command, had learned of the German intentions and used the delay to prepare a series of defensive belts, along the routes of the planned German offensive. The Soviet leadership also massed several armies deep behind their defenses as the Stavka Reserve. On July 12, 1943 on the southern front of Kursk Bulge near Prokhorovka Station, took place one of the largest battles in military history with participation of armored units. The Soviet 5th Guards Tank Army and the German 2nd SS Panzer Corps clashed in a massive battle of armored vehicles, reminiscent of medieval clashes between opposing armored cavalry. More than a thousand armored vehicles and anti-tank guns from both sides converged on a large plain south of Kursk in the vicinity of Prokhorovka on the morning of July 12, setting the stage for what would be the largest single tank battle in history, and perhaps the most decisive moment of the war. The German plan had been for the 48th Panzer Corps to lead the attack against the Soviet defenses at Prokhorovka, but it was the 2nd SS Panzer Corps, commanded by General Paul Hauser, that made the most progress and was subject to a major assault from the 5th Guards Tank Army on July 12. The Soviet 5th Guards Tank Army, commanded by General Rotmistrov, was supposed to be held in reserve until the German offensive was blunted, but it was rushed into action to stop the 2nd SS Panzer Corps' advance. The German forces involved in the Battle of Prokhorovka were from the three Waffen-SS divisions of the 2nd SS Panzer Corps, Liebstandarte, Das Reich, and Todinkov. Thousands of men and machines were organized for this gigantic endeavor, with the Luftwaffe providing air support, and many believed at the time that failure would mean almost certain annihilation. 2nd SS Panzer Corps supplied just under 500 tanks and armored vehicles, for what would turn into the greatest armored battle in history. The Panzer Grenadier Division, Liebstandarte SS Adolf Hitler, of the 2nd SS Panzer Corps was the main unit involved. The Liebstandarte, which began as a corps dedicated to Hitler's security, was the German Army's best equipped and most formidable division. It was re-equipped for Citadel and had considerable tank and anti-tank capability, including Panzer IVs, armed with long-barreled 75mm high-velocity main guns, an assault gun battalion, an infantry units in armored vehicles, and a heavy tank unit with 13 Tigers. The Tiger tank was impressive in every way, and the Wehrmacht now possessed a tank to compete with the T-34s and the KV-1s. It weighed 57 tons, had 4-inch thick frontal armor plating, 
and mounted a long 88mm cannon and two machine guns. The Tiger had a top speed of 23 miles per hour and a crew of five. The second SS Panzer Corps, a force of slightly under 300 vehicles, including 15 Tigers, squared up against the Red Army's 5th Guards Tank Army, 90 kilometers southeast of Kursk, with the battlefield spanning some 20 kilometers. Despite being outnumbered by more than three vehicles to one, the Waffen SS divisions more than held their own, standing firm in the face of wave after wave of Soviet attacks. The Todinkov and Das Reich would take the northern and southern routes respectively, while the Liebstandarte would be tasked with directly assaulting the enemy as they advanced towards the settlement. On the 12th of July, the Liebstandarte division had four Tiger tanks operational, commanded by SS Untersturmfeuer Michael Whitman. Whitman and his comrades were only three kilometers from the small and formerly inconsequential town of Prokhorovka, after making their way across the Sel River corridor and fending off multiple enemy assaults. Unknown to 2nd Panzer Corps Commander Hauser, two new Soviet divisions, the 18th and 29th Tank Corps of Lt. Gen. Pavel Rotmistrov's 5th Guards Tank Army, had positioned themselves south of the town to launch their own counterattack. The Liebstandarte would first be caught off guard by Rotmistrov's counterattack, but after the initial shock, the advanced troops had recovered sufficiently to hold their positions. Whitman's group of four Tigers aided the reconnaissance battalion in its efforts to secure Liebstandarte's left flank, and faced battle against the 18th Tank Corps advancing 181st Tank Brigade. The Tigers battled the Soviet tanks at ranges from 1,000 meters down to point blank, in a three-hour engagement, inflicting heavy losses on the Soviet tankers and successfully repelling their attack. The anti-tank ditches had proved to be effective in nullifying the enemy threat, and Luftwaffe's support had also been crucial in disrupting and repelling the fast-advancing Soviet armor. The dry flat Steplin soon became a scene of devastation as the battle raged, littered with the burning carcasses of hundreds of armored vehicles, and the twisted and charred bodies of dead crews and infantry soldiers. After a day of intense fighting, the area around what had been designated, Hill 252.2 was held by the Liebstandarte forces. Meanwhile, the other two Waffen SS divisions had mixed fortunes. Todinkov had suffered considerable casualties on its way to its targeted assembly point northwest of Prokhorovka, while Das Reich had become bogged down in the face of fierce Soviet resistance. When the numbers were added up at the end of the day, the German formations would appear to have a staggering victory. Compared to the Soviets, who had lost hundreds of tanks, only a handful of tanks had been lost. The losses on both sides have been reported in a number of ways, all of which have sparked debate, but practically all of the available sources agree that the Liebstandarte would lose only one Tiger, and even that was recoverable and repairable. According to historian Christer Bergstrom, the Germans lost 850 men and only five Panzers in the engagement, compared to 5,500 men killed or wounded and 300 tanks for the Soviets. In the end, the battle would be ultimately decided by sheer weight of numbers. Despite the skill and professionalism of their crews, the smaller German formations were overpowered, by wave after wave of Soviet T-34s and KV-1s. While German tanks were in short supply, the loss of one Soviet tank seemed to prompt the arrival of two more. While the Soviets were able to overcome the 5th Guards Tank Army commander Rotmistrov's costly tactics and absorb their heavy losses, the impact on the depleted Waffen-SS divisions brought the planned German offensive to a juddering halt. The Battle of Prokhorovka was a tactical victory for the Germans, but not a strategic one. In the meantime, Stalin's propaganda agencies went into overdrive, reporting the destruction of a significant number of clearly fictional Tiger tanks. 
Despite the fact that Michael Whitman and his colleagues had been enormously successful in attaining their specific goals, the overall situation was grim, something that even the most optimistic Hitler would eventually admit. The Liebstandertes Tiger Company continued to serve with distinction in Elan, as the battle neared its inevitable conclusion. Many troops had been lost, and despite the accomplishments of the Tiger Company and the Liebstandarte as a whole, Kursk still remained in the hands of the Soviets. The main fight around Prokhorovka may have been won, but Operation Citadel, the strategy to cut off the Kursk salient, had failed. After failing to meet its goal, Hitler, against the advice of his commanders, cancelled Operation Citadel and began redeploying its forces to deal with new pressing developments elsewhere. The 2nd SS Panzer Corps was ordered to withdraw by the afternoon of July 17, and Michael Whitman and his colleagues were redeployed to Italy. If you have enjoyed watching the video, please subscribe and support the channel for more. Many thanks for watching.